Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Richard Schneeman. Today we're going to be talking about HTML and ERB. So let's just go ahead and get started with HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. This is an example of HTML. If you've ever viewed source on a web page, uh, you will. This is exactly what you'll see. Uh, you will see lots of angly brackets with content in between them. HTML has tags. Uh, this this would be a opening of a tag. We just we are going to be opening a division, so div, and then we are going to be closing a tag. If this is unfamiliar to you, I would recommend taking a look into some HTML resources. Uh, we don't really have time to fully dive into all that you can do with HTML, um, but this is yeah a pretty pretty okay uh, refresher if you're already familiar with it. So we are going to be doing an exercise at the end of this uh, series of videos, and the goal is to be making websites with Ruby. So in order to do that, we are going to be using embedded Ruby. Uh, it is ERB, and you will, we will be using files that end in .erb. Uh, we are actually going to embed Ruby, so we're going to be using that ERB inside of HTML. Sound uh, sounds pretty cool, but but how do we actually do it? So this is an example of a ERB tag. Previously, we had um, we had HTML tags. Div was an HTML tag. Here, by saying percent inside of those angly brackets, um, we are actually defining this as a Ruby uh, piece of code that we can read in and parse. Um, if we have an equal in the front, so percent equal, that means it's actually going to uh, take the value of that Ruby code and um, turn it into text and put that on to the screen. So before we build HTML, let's take a look at the ERB library. ERB is a standard library. If you have never used standard libraries, you can take a look at the video I did on Ruby standard libraries. So we're going to first require ERB. Then we can set a variable of X to anything we want. Uh, then we are going to be using the ERB library. So we have capital ERB dot new. And then in it, we are passing a string of the value of x is, and then we have this ERB tag. So inside of that ERB tag, we have x. We're putting that, that string equal to template. Then when we call template, and this is going to be one of those code spells I mentioned, we're going to call template.result and pass in binding. If you doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Don't worry about it. Um, just focus on the uh, the ERB parts. We're going to get the value of X is 42. So if, to make this a little bit clearer, uh, we're going to require ERB, set X equal to 42. Um, we have this Ruby code, which is going to be evaluated later in this string. We set the, va the variable of template equal to a new ERB object. And then we call that ERB object, which is in a variable called template, dot result and pass in binding. The output is going to be, whoops, uh, the value of X is 42. Okay, so how does this help making HTML, you might ask yourself. Well, I'm glad you asked. We can actually put ERB into HTML. Uh, here we have HTML that says the time is now, and then we have an ERB tag that says time.now. So when if we were to read this whole string in, parse it as ERB, and then turn it into uh, HTML, then it will actually say the current time. This is a great way that we can make our website a little bit more dynamic. Uh, maybe a little bit of a contrived example, but, uh, but there you go. If you puts the value of that um, ERB parsed string, it's actually showing you the current time. Uh, we can do a lot more than just that, but wanted to kind of uh, introduce this to you in a very base level. Uh, previously, we talked about using the percent uh, blocks or the, the percent tags, and this means that it is an ERB tag. We don't always have to use the equal. That's only if we want to output something. Um, we can, we can 
assign variables or do anything else that you want to do inside of a typical Ruby line. Here we are setting a variable of x equal to 1 plus 2. Again, very simple, but uh, ERB is very powerful because you can do everything inside of these tags that you can do inside of Ruby. One example is iterators. If you missed the section on arrays and iterators, please go ahead and pause this right now and go look for that video. If you saw it and still don't quite understand what an iterator is, uh, maybe watch this section. And if you still get confused, go back and watch the array video once again. So this is a section of um, HTML with ERB in it. So we are going to be converting this, um, pretending like we are the computer, and actually converting this to HTML. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first we're going to take a look at the first line. This is going to be opening up an unordered list. So um, since that doesn't have any Ruby in it, we don't need to parse anything. We don't need to actually run any Ruby code. Um, we'll just go ahead and spit out unordered list. The next line, we actually have an array inside of here. Um, so we have an array that has the two values of cats and dogs. And in that, we are calling dot each. Um, so we are using this as uh, we're iterating over this array. And for each element in this array, we are going to be outputting a string of um, list item and then combining that with pets are great and then end list item. So on the first iteration of this, uh, the, the first loop of this each, the output into HTML is actually going to be list item cats are great. And hopefully you see where we got the cats variable and we or sorry, the cat's string, we put that into the pet variable, and then we used the pet variable to build a string. If we run this um, on the next iteration of this array, we've already gone over cats. Hopefully, you can, in your head, decide what the next value is, and hopefully, you thought it was going to be list item. Dogs are great. Um, so... We can uh, go on with this iterator. If you're completely 100% totally lost, go back and watch that array video again. Uh, maybe you can try to uh, try to actually run some iterators in IRB. Uh, otherwise, we will be actually practicing with iterating over arrays to build HTML later on. So moving on with our uh, our parsing example, after we've uh, iterated over the string of cats and the string of dogs, we've finished our array. So we are going to um, continue on after the end section. So that would just be a the end tag of an unordered list. So together, we were able to um, to build a list of different items. So again, this was a very contrived example, um, but you can imagine building dynamic lists out of values people enter or looping over different statuses that your friends post onto a service. Uh, so using iterators inside of your view code is uh, very, very handy. And this is one way that essentially we are automating the HTML that we are building. All right, so Rails by default uses ERB to generate views. And again, by views, I mean, these are the things that actually go across on the wire. And this is, this that's what people, uh, that's what people see. That's views get turned into the HTML that um, actually goes into your web browser and gets generated into something that you can understand. Um, inside of the Rails project, we will have .html.erb files, and you will find those files in a folder under app called Views. Here we're looking at a view called um, new.html.erb, and you can see here that we have some HTML, so we have a header tag and sign in at the very top, and um, later on we have some 
Ruby that is a little bit um, Rails specific, but if you take a look at f dot email field, then this is actually saying that hey, we're going to output an email field here, um, and right below it we have a password field. Um, so this is an example of actually building a form inside of Ruby. So and 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 Rails, um, we won't be using Ruby and Rails in our example, but I just wanted to. Uh, show how this relates. Also show you that um, ERB is not just a Rails thing, it is a, uh, a Ruby thing. It's a very powerful concept and we can use it to do quite a bit. Uh, so before we get started, I also want to introduce you to Git. Uh, so please go ahead and watch the next module on Git. All of the, uh, the homework and the exercise, you will need to be able to use a little bit of Git. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm Richard Schneeman.